Welcome back once again all of my low carb friends and for those of you who are here for the first time, welcome. Today I have another super easy keto coconut flour recipe for you guys. Today I'm going to teach you how to make easy keto coconut flour caramel flavored cinnamon rolls with a quick caramel flavored icing to go on top. These are so good and so easy. And if you want printable versions of these, you can check out my website at janetsdeliciouslowcarbkitchen.com. You can find printable versions of these and other goodies there for you. And if you're new to the channel and you want to see lots of easy, delicious, low-carb recipes, make sure you click that subscribe button and click the notification bell that's right next to the subscribe button. That way you can be notified every time I put out videos on every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you'd like to help support the channel, make sure you scroll down in the description of the video. You'll see some Amazon affiliate links. Anytime you purchase anything using those Amazon affiliate links, a small portion of your purchase will go to me and will help to support the channel. So anytime you want to purchase anything on Amazon, make sure you remember me, use my affiliate link, and a small portion of your purchase will help to support the channel. And while you do all that, let's get cooking. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Line an 8-inch round cake pan with parchment paper. I usually spray it really lightly first and then put the parchment paper on top of it. That way the parchment paper doesn't slip around or anything when you're trying to put the cinnamon rolls in there. In a large mixer bowl, combine 3 fourths cup of coconut flour, 1 fourth cup of golden monk fruit or brown sugar sweetener of your choice, 3 tablespoons of psyllium husk powder, two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of xanthan gum, and a half teaspoon of salt. Sift or whisk these all together until they're fully combined and there are no lumps in the dry ingredients. Add three large room temperature eggs. Make sure they are room temperature. They beat in more smooth when they are room temperature. Beat on low for about 10 seconds or just enough to moisten the dry ingredients. Then increase your speed to medium low and beat on medium low for about 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined and all the dry ingredients are wet. Scrape down the sides of the bowl if needed. Add a half cup of room temperature butter that's been slightly softened. Make sure it's just softened, not melted. And two teaspoons of caramel extract. If you can't find caramel extract, you can use maple extract or vanilla extract. It will have a slightly different taste but it will still taste really good and have a little hint of that caramel flavor still but if you can find caramel extract that's the way to go. Beat on low again for another 10 seconds or just enough to break up the butter then increase the speed to medium and beat on medium for another 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined and creamy. Add 1 fourth cup of warm milk of your choice Make sure it is warm. You don't want it to be cold and you don't want it to be hot. You just want it just barely above room temperature is perfect. It helps the psyllium husk powder and the xanthan gum to bind a lot more smoothly when your milk is not cold. So you do not want cold milk in there. Beat together on low for another 10 seconds or just until the milk is starting to get incorporated with the other ingredients. Then again, increase your speed to medium and beat on medium for another 30 seconds or until everything is fully combined and smooth. Scrape down the sides of the bowl once again and push all the ingredients to the center of the bowl. Then allow the dough to sit at room temperature uncovered for about 10 minutes so that the xanthan gum and the psyllium husk powder can absorb any extra moisture. After the dough has set at room temperature for 10 minutes, then place it uncovered in the refrigerator for another 5 minutes. This just helps the dough to firm up enough so that when you go to roll it out and shape it, it doesn't fall apart on you. So you do definitely need it to chill for at least five minutes. While the dough is in the refrigerator, we're going to make the filling. In a small bowl, combine three tablespoons of brown swerve or brown sugar sweetener of your choice and two tablespoons of ground cinnamon. Use your fingers and break up the brown swerve and combine it well with the ground cinnamon until the brown swerve and the ground cinnamon are fully combined. Add two tablespoons of melted butter that has been cooled. Make sure it's not hot. Then use a fork and stir the melted butter into the brown swerve and cinnamon until everything is fully combined. If you want to, you can add some finely chopped pecans if you like more of a 
sticky bun type filling. I'm not real big on pecan, so I don't put them in my cinnamon rolls, but it's up to you if you want to put that. Once it's combined, set it aside for a minute. Then remove the dough from the refrigerator. Massage it in your hands just a couple times just to make sure that it is the right texture. It should have a slight moist filling to it, but it should not be a super wet dough and it should not be sticking to your hands. So you do want to have some moisture in there because you don't want dry cinnamon rolls, but you don't want the dough so wet that it's sticky. Then shape the dough into an oval shape and place the oval onto a clean lined cutting surface. Press or roll the dough out into a long rectangle that's about a fourth inch thick. If you do use a rolling pin, make sure you cover the dough with a piece of parchment paper so the dough stays moist and doesn't stick to your rolling pin. Once you've rolled out your rectangle, take your filling and use your fingers and crumble it over the entire rectangle Leave a little bit of room around the edges so that way the filling doesn't get pressed out of the rectangle. Try to cover the rectangle as evenly as possible and crumble the filling into as small of pieces as you can. Now, if you're one of those who likes a lot of filling, you can always double the filling recipe if you don't think this is going to be enough for you. For me, it's perfect. I like to taste my filling, but I don't want it overpowering, so... It's up to you there how much filling you think you're going to want. Once your filling is evenly crumbled over the rectangle, then very gently press the filling into the dough. That way when you go to roll it up, the filling's not falling out everywhere. Make sure you just gently press it. You don't want to flatten your dough too much. So just gently press it into the dough. Then very carefully roll the dough long side up into a long spiral log. Now you want to do this carefully and make sure that the dough is smooth while it's being rolled. If at any time it seems like your dough is getting a little bit dry or you're seeing some cracks or anything like that in the dough while you're rolling it, just moisten your fingers very, very lightly. Rub your fingers across the dough and seal up the cracks if you have any. You want to make sure you have a smooth log while you're rolling it. Once the dough is all rolled up, very lightly dampen the tips of your fingers and lightly rub your finger across the seam of the roll to seal the roll and to make it smooth. You want to make sure that the roll is tightly sealed. That way the cinnamon rolls don't come apart when you're baking them. Once your dough is rolled into a smooth log, then cut the dough into nine spirals that are about anywhere from one and a half to two inches thick. I just put two fingers and measure it the thickness of my two fingers. I have kind of small fingers, so it's probably about an inch and a half or so. But either or, just nine equal portions is what you're looking for. Then place the portions spiral side up and side by side into your prepared cake pan. It's okay if these are touching on the sides. They're supposed to. That's the way it's supposed to be. You're going to have enough that go around the edge of the pan and should have one right in the middle. Then place them in your preheated oven and bake at 350 degrees for anywhere from 20 to 25 minutes or until they're lightly golden around the edges. For me, 23 minutes was perfect. But as I always say, everyone's oven is different. So 20 to 25 minutes, you're looking for them to be lightly golden on top. Now when it starts getting down to about the last five minutes of your baking time, that's usually when I start making the icing. So for the icing, place a medium saucepan over medium heat, then combine two tablespoons of the milk of your choice, two tablespoons of butter, and two tablespoons of golden monk fruit sweetener or brown sugar sweetener of your choice. Whisk these all together until the butter is fully melted, until the butter and the monk fruit sweetener have fully melted and dissolved, and the mixture has come up to a low boil. Once it's come to a low boil, remove it from the heat, then add a half teaspoon of caramel extract. And again, if you can't find caramel extract, you can use vanilla or maple extract. They'll have a slightly different taste, but it will still taste good. Gradually whisk in one and a fourth cups powdered swerve or powdered sweetener of your choice in small amounts until it is fully combined. Make sure you do this just a little bit at a time 
Add a little bit of the powdered swerve, then whisk it in until it's fully combined and dissolved. And again, a little bit more until it's fully combined and dissolved until the entire one and a fourth cups of powdered swerve has been fully added and is fully dissolved. Once the powdered swerve has been fully added and fully dissolved, remove the cinnamon rolls from the oven. They will still be just a little bit soft, but they will firm up as they cool. Allow them to cool just for a couple minutes before you add the icing on top. Spoon the warm icing onto the warm cinnamon rolls and use your spoon just to evenly spread it over the top of each cinnamon roll. Once you've spread the icing on the cinnamon rolls, you can serve them immediately if you want to, or allow them to cool completely and store them in an airtight container in the refrigerator for up to five days. If you do decide you want to eat these later or another day, when you're ready to eat them, just pop them on a plate, pop them in your microwave for about 10 seconds, just enough to give them a little bit of a warm to them and they'll taste like they just came out of the oven. So eat and enjoy. And that's our recipe of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you click that thumbs up like button, click that subscribe button, leave me a comment if you want to. Let me know if there's any recipes that you'd like to learn how to make and I'll do what I can to get those out there for you. And as always, keep cooking.